this hangout is live. Uh, Bronwyn, would, would you like to assign a completely arbitrary number? I would. I'm going to have to go with 84. Okay. <laughs> I, I think it's closer to like 30. <laughs> Meh. 84 was closer than 6,427, which I think might have been my last one. So that was pretty long. Yeah, that's a that was a big win. <laughs> it was a very big party. <laughs> <laughs> so we were going to chat about Ghostbusters today. Who are you gonna um, call? Exactly, and I really felt like we should have some type of I don't know. Bells and whistles and cosplay and stuff happening to At celebrate least that. marshmallows. <laughs> I know, right? I really feel like we should, but we don't. Alas. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a bit of a letdown. Sorry, folks. Yeah. <laughs> we have no Mr. Stay Puffed. <laughs> you know, which at the end of the day is just as well, but... <laughs> <laughs> he scared me as a kid. Mr. Oh, Stapen was creepy. creepy. I uh, I have to admit, I, I rewatched Ghostbusters recently so that we could talk about this. Um, but I did I rewatched it with some friends of mine, and we spent a lot of the movie, I mean, laughing and joking and talking about our favorite parts and really just enjoying it because it had been a long time since I'd seen it. But um, spent a lot of the movie going, oh. Oh, this part scared the crap out of me when I was little. <laughs> oh, oh no, I can't believe that part scared me so much. Oh, this one scared me too. You know. <laughs> I mean, I had a T-shirt, um, but there were some parts that that kind of. I mean, not necessarily, I guess, by today's standards of scary stuff. Like you know, um, but we we lived in a, it, it, movies where you know the effects were different. It was just. But there were some really scary little bits in there. Um, yep. Although it is very, very, very funny to watch them now and to think about how scared yeah. I was when I saw that. That librarian in the beginning scared the pants off. Right? Oh, my God. Pantslessness. Yes. I, <laughs> and I, like, when, whenever, there, like, I, when I, I lived in this apartment and uh, we had these storage units that were in the basement and they were... Um, like catacombs down yeah. there, and that's what I, I I always felt like I was gonna come around the corner and there would be somebody like that librarian like you know unlocking a padlock trying to get near a storage space and then I should go bad <laughs> and I would run away not <laughs> before you got slimed <laughs> I know and that, I think, you know that, and that is a fantastic opening too is yeah. is that librarian and um and you know well initially the library the the actual librarian and she sees a specter that we don't get to see and that kind of you know gives you the willies and then when they come back it's just yeah the the one liners throughout that whole movie are are just so fantastic my one of my favorites though is um when they're when, <laughs> when they're like right around that book stack yep and Dan Aykroyd says, listen, do you smell something? <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, my God. And that we have the best. Decided, my friends and I, we decided that uh, this was the moment when we really realized Bill Murray, he has, he's such a unique fellow. And we, I mean, yeah. you got to love Bill Murray. I mean, realistically speaking, that's just kind of a state of being, right? But, <laughs> Bill Murray is such an intriguing fellow because he is at once so likable and, and such a so sleaze bag. Such a sleaze bag. He's such a jerk in this movie, and you like yeah. him anyway. I, and I was do. trying to think about the different actors who could pull off that role, and I can't think of anyone. Like who else? Who else do you love? Not love to hate, but love and hate. Alec Baldwin, but I don't think he's funny enough. No, exactly. Yeah. He's a little too pompousy. I mean, don't get me wrong, he yeah. has his own sort of niche for that, but couldn't have done that. No. Especially not back in the day. He's gotten funnier as he's gotten older, but... Yeah, he's definitely found a sense of... He took himself way too... Like, his earlier career movies, I can't even watch. Yeah. They're no. very... Like Richard Gere. I, oh. I can't watch Richard Gere. No. It's like, oh, honey, you're so awkward because you don't know you're awkward. <laughs> 
he, and you know, you actually, and I, I, you know what I will say about Richard Gere is, while he's a handsome man, he's very pretty, very peacockish, you know, um, I can't handle the whispering. I oh. cannot, can't, at any time an actor it's starts like a whispering. Limp man ah. No, I, that I haven't noticed, but any time an actor starts whispering, I'll be like, did you go to the Richard Gere School of Acting? Yeah. Because this doesn't make things serious. No. To me, like, you know when somebody goes to shake your hand and it's not a good handshake and it just is oh. all the hand, it's all limp? Yeah. That, to me, like, Richard Gere whispering is, is like a limp handshake. It's just, okay. like, oh, don't, yuck. No, don't do that. <laughs> go big or go home, honey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, no, I, there are certain actors I can't, I just can't watch. Alec Baldwin in his early career when he thought more, except for in Beetlejuice. Um yeah. Yeah, Beetlejuice, but I mean Beetlejuice is Beetlejuice. But the thing is about Bill Murray is it's not, he's not unattractive, but he's not like a gorgeous guy, but he's so funny. You he's charming. Just, he's charming. and he's it, charming in such a smarmy way. I don't know why he pulls off charming. He shouldn't. By any stretch of the imagination, nothing that comes out of his mouth in that movie should be charming. No. <laughs> I know, but but you love him. I know, and it was going around on on Twitter. Everybody was asking, like, you know, who's your favorite Ghostbuster? And I said Venkman because it's not that I don't love Egon because I do. Egon I, was I, he yeah. he rocks. He's got his own little neuroses going on that is just a joy to watch. Oh my god. Um, and uh, um, Ray, I love Ray. I I love them all. I do. I I really so genuinely amazing. do. But Venkman is just hilarious. He, he has the best lines through this movie. Um, although when Ray's he, got some great ones, too. I, when he, I'm sorry, but right at the very beginning when he's doing the psychic testing on the guy and then the pretty girl, and the guy's yeah. actually getting them right, and the girl is getting all of them wrong. And, he's like, yes. yeah. and he just keeps electrocuting the other guy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. You can keep the five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Uh, okay. Oh, God. What are you even testing for? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It was yeah. negative reinforcement. <laughs> <laughs> well, and actually, it was working. That, that was the whole thing, was that the more he shocked him, the more the guy got the cards right. <laughs> <laughs> But I don't think that owed much to his scientific method, let's be honest. <laughs> no, but, uh, no, it was just sort of, it was funny that, that, you know, while it's a joke, you know, it was also actually in the movie. Yeah. yeah. It was, anyway, I just. So funny. <sighs> I, I do have to say, and I don't know if anybody else feels this way, but um, when they're playing the commercial in her apartment, in Dana uh, Barrett's apartment. Yeah. Um, and I got to tell you, I am, like, this close to do in cosplay of her. I really, really want to. But I want to um, see you in that orange silky outfit when she's that like is, at the door. That is my that is my uh <laughs> that is that is my one barrier. I can't seem to find something that and I and I and I was kinda of looking at other people's cosplays and stuff and they do a cute job with you know different orange dresses and stuff, but I like her gold lame dress under the orange sheer, you know what I mean? And I, I can't seem to, so it's either that or uh, Stama Tar. I kind of want to do like a, um, something like that from Defiance. Yeah. Anyway, but I, I love Dana Barrett. Um, I think it's so funny that she went from something uh, like Alien yeah. to Ghostbusters. <laughs> like, how did that, how did that go down? I mean, I know that they were really like, you know, super celebrities from Saturday Night Live, but I mean, I just, it's sort of like, how, how did, how did you get her to agree to this? Right? I mean, there's, there's, there's not getting typecast, and then there's aliens to Ghostbusters. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what, maybe she's just got a real mind for the cult favorites, you know, I mean. She, you know, I, I love the fact that she shows up in cartoons as ship voices, and you know, she's, I, I she's, she's so much fun. I just, I, I adore her. her. Exactly. Um, and I mean, then and, yeah, just her entire career has been peppered with interesting choices that she just knocks out of the park, whether the material is good or not. Right. So. Right. I, I yeah. I, I I don't think I've seen her in anything where I really just genuinely didn't like her or her character. There's usually something. Nothing comes to mind. Yeah. 
I really like her. Yeah, but uh, I, li I like the, the commercial that's playing in her apartment because there's a particular line that, that Ray says that doesn't really roll off the tongue, but it does. Uh, it sounds fantastic when he says, for all your supernatural elimination needs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It, is, it sounds awkward, but it just rolls right out of his mouth well, like he said it up and off. He does. I had to practice. <laughs> and we all appreciate it. Because <laughs> it's not a natural you know, succession of, of verbiage. It's no, quite... Supernatural elimination needs. Yeah, no, that just totally ties your tongue. <laughs> and he just rolls it right out, and I love the way it sounds. I don't know what it is about... I wonder if it's accurate. It's like one of my favorite little bits. Like I have to, if I miss it, I will rewind it to to get to that part. I love that. That's awesome. That's yeah, I do. I love that little commercial. It's so cheesy and amazing. It is not as che no, not as cheesy as the is the Ghostbusters two commercial. That just that was painful. Fair. But, um. I liked Ghostbusters 2, and now that we watched it, we'll have to do that at a different show, but I liked sure. Ghostbusters 2 for the sheer fact that it showed consequences from Ghostbusters 1. I, yes, I liked that as well. I thought that was funny, that they were shined. Well, they were <laughs> a little bit wantonly destructive, for lack of a better term. True. <laughs> like, True. <laughs> Although, I mean, really, there's no precedence. What are you going to, you know, I mean... How, how do you... When they go to the hotel, though, to get rid of, like, the Slimer at the at yes. the hotel. That was hilarious. Oh, my God. When they're just like, we need more space. Shove, shove, shove. I yeah, know. <laughs> you can just watch that poor, like... And the know, flowers under. are still standing. <laughs> <laughs> we will have your event. <laughs> I know. Of course the room will be ready by the time your event arrives. Yeah, I know, just by the time the, the guests arrive for your event. Like, I, you just, and you're just cringing because you know yeah. it's a lie. It's a oh, big, yeah. dirty lie. But the liar who lies. Who lies. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that is actually the only space in which there is sort of where, because for whatever reason, I mean, I, I am very good at not being able to sort of roll with the, um, uh, disbelief, uh, yeah. suspension of disbelief. A lot of times, I I get snagged on little bits, and and then it yep. just it just rolls me right out of it. And it's still fun to watch, but I'm not in the throes of it, so to speak. And um, there is one little bit there that trips me a little bit, and that's when they all get off on one floor, and then all of a sudden, uh, Egon is in the ballroom, <laughs> <laughs> like. Why are you, when did you say you are going to the ballroom? Then how, where, when did you go? Because you all got off on the same floor, and then in a space of, like, all of a sudden he's like, yeah, he's in the ballroom. Like, Although, if anybody was going to do that to me, it would be Egon, who would immediately wander off and go somewhere and not tell anyone. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, just, it, was just, it was just the, the, the one time where I was just like, really? But, I mean, <laughs> but, but that, that's just it, is I bought everything else. Yeah, exactly. I do love how they're basically like a extortionist, right? They're like, we're going to call that. That'll cost you $5,000. I, like, oh, I, I love how, I love how you go. Oh, we'll like, just put it back. <laughs> four. Four big yeah. ones. These are, they're just sort of scratching. <laughs> four. Three. That's going to cost Yeah, he just, I, I, I love. Storage. That'll only cost you a grand. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Storage of the beast. It's a beast? <laughs> <sighs> Full roaming class five something vapor and a nasty one too. Oh my god, I've watched this movie so many times. It's just not even funny. So, but you know what? I just I have to since we mentioned the second one, I will say I I love love love. Um, God, what is her name? The secretary. Annie Potts. I love Annie Potts. I yeah, do. I know I, she's so great in that role. She is so cute. Um, and I I love how she is just in love with Egon, and he just he knows that at the same time he's. Like just sidestepping her constantly. Yeah. Um, I don't like what they did to her in Ghostbusters too. No. She went from being like with the sh cute short hair, not that I have you know short hair, but uh, to like this weird haircut and the crazy leopard jacket, and she was all of a sudden she was just sort of spacey and weird. Yeah. Where she starts out in Ghostbusters, she's just like you know, dude, you you know, 
you said you'd hire more help. I've been here day after day. Would you get your gear and yeah, I got it. Oh, I'm gonna hit it. <laughs> Damn it, Janet. Um, I love you. Yeah, and uh. <laughs> But I love how she starts out that way in Ghostbusters. She's very sort of normal and down to earth, but she still sort of has this like ongoing crush with Egon. And then they switched gears on her in a really weird way for Ghostbusters too. But we'll, we can talk about that another time. But I just it just had to because I adore her in this role. I I love the uh, just the computers and all of the craziness is so dated at this stage. Yeah. But I love there was one part in particular where they were setting up the office, and she's sitting at the desk. And one of my friends I was watching the movie with was like, I love how the computer's not even hooked up to anything. And then her husband was like, wait, Egon's hooking it up now. And it was just the perfect cue because then Egon comes out from underneath the desk. He's basically in Annie Pod's lap. <laughs> He's like, ooh. I'm like, oh, while well, you're down there. Like, <laughs> yikes. That was a different movie. <laughs> Different sort of busted, <laughs> but uh, yeah, the the computer stuff cracks me up as it always does in movies because it's, yeah. it's never spot on. Even even in like hackers and stuff, it was sort of goofy. <laughs> but yeah, um, but uh, um, I love the product placement in this movie with the owl potato chips and the cheese its crackers and like oh yeah, yep, and the yeah. smoking. Oh, oh my, my god, with the smoking! Oh no! And there was one point at which Dan Aykroyd has this cigarette, and it's actually like hanging up his lips. Yeah, and I'm like, did they do that on purpose? Is that supposed to be like a trick cigarette, or did they just get that good shot? They're like, we have to use that no matter what happens. I I think I think it might have happened, and then they did it again because he actually turns like a split second too early, like mm -hmm. to see sort of you know, like he. Instead of looking to see what's happening in the hallway, his eyes widen and stuff before he even realizes what's down there. So I think that might have all been like rehearsed. Maybe yeah. he did it once and it was funny, and then, but yeah, it sticks to his lip. It's so weird to see them smoking. I know it's so weird. It's so weird to watch that as like a constant activity in a movie. Yeah. Well, and it's just it's so sort of oddly misplaced with Dan Aykroyd. And I mean, I don't know anything about, like, I don't know if he smokes as a person, but in his character, his character is so sort of goofy and lovable and innocent and whatever, and so that is so not associated with smoking. Because at this stage, the only people you ever see smoking anymore, if you ever see it at all, they're bad guys. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know? Or any heroes or, yeah, yeah. And I, I think initially, I mean, I think, because, like, I get like Egon not smoking, but I think initially I didn't I didn't think anything of it because Blues Brothers was such a big thing, and you know he's smoking his way through that, and he was like rail thin like a string bean in that movie, uh -huh. and and they're all like babies, they're all babies in this movie. <laughs> I know they're so cute. And like like just Bill Murray's got no gut, and he's just he's just, he's just, he's just, he's just I know. He's all adorable. They're they're all cute. They're all so cute. And it's not not that. Um, and now I can't remember his name. And I'm gonna have to go look it up. And we're gonna have to edit this out. And it's gonna take time. And I'm gonna be. Ernie Hudson. I love him too. Um, and he's Winston Zedmore. Oh yes. Um, <laughs> like I hadn't seen him in anything before that, and the like. Literally, I kid you not. The next thing I saw him in was Congo, poor man. Um, <laughs> which was a great book, <laughs> horrible movie. Yeah. Um, but he's got the he's got one of the best parts in it, which is when the gorilla attacks, and the guy's like, you know, I thought you said you don't run away. You know what happened to you? You, you know, I thought you said to stay put when a gorilla attacks, and he's like, I run away. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> <laughs> just it's a great line um but i hadn't seen him like i there, i went a huge stretch and i've seen him in a few things that he's been on some sci-fi movies and stuff um but they are all you know so different now um and it's just sometimes you know when you when you watch them it's it's sort of uh i don't want to say a shock but it's a little bit like harold ramus some of his stuff um poor guy may he rest in peace honestly that made me sad 
I know. It really did. It's it, it, it took me, I want to say months, before I could actually watch Ghostbusters yeah, after really. he died. Yeah. We talked about watching it back, you know, and I just, I, I couldn't do it. I didn't. Because, I mean, I want to say, I mean, I, I really do watch it fairly frequently as far as movies go. I mean, I, I watch it several times a year. I don't want to say monthly, but probably close to that. And I, I just had to live alone for a while. Um, it just felt so bad. No. Um, but they're all so they just just start contrast. It's just it's just so funny to to sort of go be able to go back in that you know sort of time machine and and watch them in their twenties and thirties and just yeah. how different they are. And and I and I have to say, um, you should know I have a thing about the hair. Just Egon's hair was fantastic in that so movie. So good. <laughs> so good. He's the only one who didn't really suffer from the whole kind of eighties thing. <laughs> that that Hello, pop no. Annie Potts looked great. She did. I, I Annie Potts is adorable. I I really thought she was so cute. I loved her glasses, and she just she was so adorable. Oh yeah. And and you know sort of, uh, I love the scene between her and and Egon um, when Vince Clortho. Yes. <laughs> AKA Lewis Tully. <laughs> <laughs> Is at the Ghostbusters headquarters after he's been dropped off, and that and let and you know what and actually let's let's have a, a word about him too. Um, uh, do, 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 why? Moranis? Yes, Rick Moranis. Why? So weird. Okay. Yes, uh, Rick Moranis. I I thought he was just hilarious in this. The way he kept um, walking himself out of his apartment and just yes. Like, Somebody oh. let me in. Oh, and, um, and those exercise clothes, like that little guy exercised. His pants like this much too short for him and oh What I thought was really funny was when he refer it while while being the creep down the hall, he refers to the creep down the hall. Yes. <laughs> and he's like, Yeah, you shouldn't leave your TV on super loud, people are complaining. So I turned my TV on super loud so people would think it was something wrong with both our TVs. <laughs> <laughs> Creep down the hall phone the manager. Okay. <laughs> you know what kind of popped into my head when, whenever I watch that bit is something that uh, pops in my head is is uh, when in Pretty in Pink when Ducky gets done singing uh, the Otis Redding tune. Oh. And Molly Ringwong Molly Ringwong is like, do you ever have one of these? <laughs> <laughs> and, and Annie Potts is like, I can't say that I have. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what he reminds me. Like that, I just always, I don't know why I associate those things together, but because he just follows her around, you know, and she's, yeah, she, she's even like creeping down the hallway, trying to sneak past his door, and he hears it. He, you know, like he hears the elevator or something, so he must be looking at his peephole to see who yeah. it is. He's like one of those guys. Even when he's having a party. I know, right? Which seemed weirdly well attended for considering his social graces, or shall I say distinct lack thereof. Well, he was giving the, the party for clients instead of friends, so he could use it as a tax write-off, which he explained. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Is the brie at room temperature? <laughs> <laughs> and the smoked salmon and and oh. uh, like acid. He just he just cracks me up. I don't know. I know, but I, yeah. for me, it's when it's him and Egon and uh, Annie Potts in the in the Ghostbusters headquarters, mm -hmm. and she's like, "Do you want some coffee?" And he says, "Do I want some coffee?" And Egon's like, "Yes, have some." And he says, "Yes, have some." <laughs> <laughs> I love that he's got the colander on his head. Yes. I know, it's like he's lost a drinking game he didn't even know he was playing. I know, exactly. <laughs> he's handing things to you guys, he's like handing him a lamp, he's like, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and nobody does deadpan like he's on. Like, I know. <clears throat> oh, oh, I'm crying. Um, yeah, and then, <laughs> yeah. And Marshmallow Man, seriously? And I love the foreshadowing because there's a bag of the Stay Puffed next to the eggs that are cooking on the counter. 
there is also a uh, Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man um, advertisement on the side of the building next to their firehouse. Yep. So it's cute how they've kind of peppered that in. Yep. I love it. I love it. They're like, I didn't think of anything. I didn't think of anything. And then <laughs> poor Dan Aykroyd, like. <laughs> has gone bye-bye, Egon. What do you have? <laughs> I'm in the capacity for rational thought. Oh. <laughs> just that he couldn't hurt me. <laughs> oh, I know. This is roasting marshmallows at Camp Wakanda. <laughs> That's turn New York into a giant bonfire. That'll be good. Yeah, right? <laughs> oh, my God. You know, and, and, and there's, there's a little... Huh? How much do I want to roast marshmallows now, though? Do <laughs> I know. Every time I watch that movie, I'm always like, that'd, that'd be tasty. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the most delicious tasting monster ever. Mm, um. monster. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's a really good. It's it, there. There's so many good bits. This is this is this whole broadcast is probably going to seem really disjointed when I watch it again later, but it's just. It's so funny. Uh, there's so many bits and pieces. It, it's, I think I'm used to sort of now when you watch a movie and um, all the funny bits are in the commercial. Yeah. And um, and they're sort of, I don't want to say few and far between, but uh, this particular movie, it's just, it's, it's just like a tapestry of them. It's, it's all so well woven together and everything sort of fits together nicely and the characters you know, yep. sort of mesh really well in ways that um, uh, does that don't it doesn't always happen with every movie, and the dialogue no. is fantastic. And, and this this movie couldn't have been made quite the way it was made at any other time. Like I think it was just a kind of right. a, a perfect timing for this movie. You know, because the cast were exactly at the right time and place to make this movie, and you know nobody else could pull off the unlikely ladies' man that Bill Murray does, <laughs> you know? And it just, it's neat to see a movie. And, it, like, admittedly, the ghosts and things like that, those effects would be more spectacular now. Yeah. But part of the appeal of this movie is the cheesiness of the effects. Because it's the ghost effects on top of what are actually very, very well done practical effects. Like, I was actually thinking to myself as I'm watching this, and they have the scene, you know, where the where the road is breaking up in front of the building and they're falling down into this and you can see like they're they've put some real effort into this practical effect where they're right. kind of falling and they're sliding down and that's an impressive thing that would probably not be done in with practical effects at this stage because it would be so easy to do with CGI. Right. And I think I mean I really do believe that this movie um <sighs> She's a dog. Um, <laughs> those, I know, those, I know you still have the statue, and they're like, oh. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You can hear the sorry. Um, I I love those like gozer dogs. I think they are awesome. So good. They are they are so much fun and I, you know and you can kind of see where they've been dubbed in and stuff now but I mean I, I the puppets are fantastic and they are huge and I I love when the one is like sitting in the bed and you know now you can kind of look at it and go oh there's people there you know there's a hole in the bed or you know but he sort of like he shakes that jacket off of his head mm -hmm. and just sort of he was they are they were really cool they were mm -hmm. very well done they are beautiful actually if you really look at them. Um, the, the gargoyles are, are nice too, but the actual gozer dogs themselves are really, really well done. Um, and I have a lot to of it, like little shout out to the uh, the evil resurrected god yes. as as David Bowie Ziggy Stardust. Like <laughs> <laughs> I know, and I was looking at her costume too, and I mean, and there's not a whole like it, it's not that. Fantastic. I mean, it's like a unitard with like uh, tinsel and little plastic bubbles. Like, 
glued to it. I mean, she's not, but you don't even pay attention. The movie is so fantastic that you don't, unless you're really looking, yep. you just glaze right over it. It's all part of this gorgeous fantasy that they created uh, the, just such an amazing job with. And seriously, that's some spectacular hair and makeup. Yeah. I, I love her. And I and I love the fact that she is like this. He calls her a little minx. Yeah. And she's like this, you know, 20-year-old model. But she sounds like an 80-year-old smoker. Yep. <laughs> Are you a god? And you're like, oh, clear that, honey. Put cigarettes down. <laughs> Drink a little water. Oh, my God. But as far as life lessons go, when somebody says, are you a god? Are you a god? The you answer is always yes. <laughs> you say yes. I know. And I love the fact that that's actually coming from, um, that's actually coming from Widmore because he was the one who sort of brought the biblical scenario into the situation when they were talking in the car and they start talking about how all of the resurrected, you know, there's, there's all these ghosts everywhere. Maybe this is part of the end of days in the Bible and how, you know, he says, I, I really love Jesus's style. And then sort of, you know, to turn on that and be like, you know, no, you be that false God. <laughs> like, <laughs> I love the fact that like, he's the one that does that sort of 180. Yeah. You know, with the golden cap. I just thought that was funny. Oh, he is hysterical. He's funny through the whole thing. Love it when he's, like, interviewing, oh, and Annie Potts is going through the list of things she's asking him if he believes in. Yeah. And it's an impressive list that she delivers flawlessly, FYI. Yeah. I know, but I know. at the end of it, he just looks at her and he says, Honey, if it comes with a steady paycheck, I believe in anything. Anything you want. I believe in anything you want me to. <laughs> a steady paycheck, exactly. I, yeah. Uh... And yeah, she she reads that list off of alien abductions and Loch Ness monster, and you know she reads this this. I don't think she even takes a breath. No, she does it, it and she does it like she's done it five million times. Like you know, how many people, that interview process? Well, I like, how, to become a Ghostbuster. Exactly, and how like how would you say your past experience is relevant to this position? <laughs> well, you know, I think, you know, I think what, what had me laughing was the fact that she sounds exasperated. She is, yeah. and I don't know if it's just because she hates the fact that she has to read this ridiculous list out loud, or if it's because she's done it a million times, but she sounds like she's just, like, had it up to here with this whole situation. She doesn't even want to hire anybody anymore. You know, like, it almost sounds like she's interviewed 5,000 people. And then he comes through, Ray comes through the door and is just like, oh, great, you're hired. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Like, she's done it a million times for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> it We're not matter. even going to look at his resume. It didn't matter who she hired. For that job. And, and frankly, what do your job prospects look like after that? Like, what follows Ghostbuster on your resume? Um, I don't know, but, you know, uh, all they did was birthday parties for yuppie larva, according to the next movie, so. True story. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't get other jobs. They were still driving around in the car. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, the car. <laughs> you know, that is fantastic. I love the fact that it is a broken down piece of junk that needs every single thing on it replaced. And he paid $4,500 for it. I know. Oh, my no. God. Poor Dan Aykroyd. Not so much with the uh, critical thinking and or, you know, spine. <laughs> he just doesn't even think because he does the same thing with the firehouse. Yeah. This is great. I want it. Let's spend, <laughs> let's spend the night here. Yeah. This I know, and they're 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 trying to bring down the price, and they're like, oh, and look at the damage, and oh no, and oh, and he's like, it's awesome, and she's like, the ching. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so they just must see him coming. Same thing with the car guy, right? Just saw him coming, and yeah, because he lists One more every pretty minute. much. It's not like he lists the radio or the air conditioning. He lists, like, really important functions on a vehicle. Yeah, you know? <laughs> How did you get this back to the firehouse? <laughs> oh, man, I know. Bill Murray's all, you can't park that thing here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. It's, it's, it's a really... This is a face acre. <laughs> It is, it's such a great movie. There's so many little bits and pieces that are just outstanding, and it's hard it's hard to nail them down. And I think it's really funny because 
there are things that you see, um, like in her refrigerator, my mom had the same casserole dish. <laughs> nice. And I actually like that was a pretty normal refrigerator, except for the like, demon screaming thing. Yeah, except for except for you know, the creatures writhing around. Um, I love it when he's like, well, "I don't think you're crazy." She's like, "I feel so much better." <laughs> um, I'm always car salesman that. says I'm not crazy. I feel so much better. Um, yeah. <laughs> and he goes to check out her refrigerator, and I mean it's. It was funny because I remember as a kid thinking, like, what junk food? I mean, it was just very normally stocked refrigerator for, like, me and my friends. Like, there's a casserole, there's salami, there's soda. Like, what? What junk food? What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, my gosh. It just The culture is so different now. And she was so, like, that wasn't there before. I'm, like, <laughs> my first thought when she said that that wasn't there before was, the ghost left junk food? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm afraid that as a child especially, I was more in the Dan Aykroyd thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't think I was really, it's probably a little bit of Rick Moranis and probably a little bit of <laughs> Bill Murray. Like a mixture yeah. of the two. <laughs> yeah, no, I was definitely a mixture of Egon and <laughs> <laughs> See, that's why we round it all out really well. Yep. <laughs> Love it. Oh my god. Yeah. Um what what is your absolute favorite part of this movie? <sighs> that is really tough to say. Um I love so many parts of this movie, it's really, really difficult to say. Um, but potentially, I guess, if I had to pick one particular scene that just inevitably makes me giggle, and I don't know why, and I don't, I can't explain it, and it's probably that, that scene where Bill Murray is coming to her apartment to check on her, and she's, she's been possessed at this Get point. Get out of my head! <laughs> <laughs> and she opens the door and she says, are you the key master? And he's like, um, no, slam. <laughs> Are you the key master? Uh huh. <laughs> you know, and, I, and I love the fact because he, he goes, uh, he goes, oh, a friend of his, and he told me to stop. Like, and she lets yeah. him in anyway. She just doesn't even hear that part no. at all. And I, and I love, I love the the uh, conversation he has with himself about yeah. her. And she's Which like, do you want this part? He's like, oh, go ahead. No, I can't. He's like, <laughs> it's like there's two of you in there already and he just has this whole conversation like sort of at her but not really with her no and really so, not yeah <laughs> he's stopped trying to scare Dr. Venkman <laughs> <laughs> and he's like she's coming on to him and he's like he's yes but no but yes but no. <laughs> <laughs> it was very Madeline Kahn wasn't it yeah. oh man <laughs> I just, that scene kills me every damn time. So while there are so many parts of that movie that make me laugh incredibly and I love them and Egon really is my favorite. And if I had to pick a second, it would definitely be that scene with the, do I want coffee? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, have some. Yes, have some. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, I love the fact that when, when she levitates and then she turns around, she's like, you know, belly down and he's like underneath her looking yeah. at her. And she growls at him. He jumps so <laughs> far when she does that. I know. It's like, you know, Sigourney Weaver just shocked him with that one, right? Like, he did not see that coming. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you know, I guess if I do it, I can't, I can't get him. So, all right. It, we're just, we're editing this. <laughs> You have a little black line over my face. <laughs> Damn it, Janet. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> just yeah, I, I that there are so many things about that. Um, I it was it's you know you want to hear something really weird too, is um, that scene actually I thought made Bill Murray a little sexy. Yeah. Because he kind of you know like he's he's kind of 
wrestling with himself a little bit. He knows ultimately it's a bad idea. He's not going to do it, but he's kind of you know, like just joking yeah, around to, yeah. to kind of, you know, relieve his own tension. And he is, does let her know, like, you're really kind of freaking me out a little bit here, but I don't know how to be serious. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, um, I, like, I remember I, it was like, I hadn't watched it in probably, I don't know, 15 years. And then I watched it again, like in my twenties. Um, I just, I just didn't have access to it. It just never on. And I, you know, and, uh, I remember like when he gives her that kiss, like right on the collarbone, I was like, that's a sexy little kiss. Like that. (laughs) Hey there. Uh (laughs) And, uh, it was just, I don't know. It just, it kind of moved him a little bit. And, and I think, I think that scene in particular sort of aids to him not being completely a smarmosaur. Yeah. Because he starts off completely. Oh, he's a... <laughs> He's, t- and we've all, like, I think as women, um, you know, no offense, guys, but I think we, we've all kind of dealt with one of those at one point in time or another. Um, certainly when you reach my age, it's, you know, you've, you've had at least one of those. Your age, because you're, what, two years <clears throat> older than me? Come now. <laughs> they can't. <laughs> Um, and then, and, and, you know, uh, unfortunately they don't tend to have as much charm <laughs> as he did. And like I'm not, really not. Yeah. And I'm not saying his blatant sort of sexist stuff is cute by any means, but, um, and it wouldn't fly now. No, no, it but, really wouldn't. You know, it just, <laughs> it just, he manages to seem harmless in a way that no one ever does when they say those things to you in person. Right. Yeah. It's it's still benign and yeah. and it's not uh <laughs> Well I think part of that actually is her though, because yeah. you know, she doesn't necessarily fit the typical female role. Like she usually, you know, she has more strength and she has a little bit of she's always looking at him kinda like, ah, okay, yeah. honey. You know? <laughs> And, you know, she does get charmed and, and everything like that. And that he does kind of save the day, you know, him and his buddies. So you can right. do that. But even at the end, when he goes to give her a kiss, she's kind of like. I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I think what's cute is that he, when, when they break apart, his he's like, whoa. You know, like, you know, like yeah. he's all, wow, you know. Yeah. <laughs> adorable and yeah. I, you know what oh speaking of that that bit i love the fact that they are all covered in marshmallowy goodness yeah and he's got like a little bit on his head yeah <laughs> and that's it <laughs> smart store gets away the way. <laughs> i know and yeah and and Wal- poor walter peck gets just based oh. <laughs> i think he actually gets basted like <laughs> He just, he, he just, it, it was. He didn't get quite yeah. enough. He was a little bit more swish. <laughs> I can't even imagine what that process must have been like for him to stand there while they pour this, like, vat of goo on him. That poor man. And what, what do you think they used? Because we had a lengthy discussion about this when we were watching it. Like, it's thicker and more viscous than foam. It honestly looks like melted marshmallow. Like, it really it, does. It reminded me of that marshmallow in a jar stuff. Yeah, like fluff yeah. or whatever the hell it is. Yeah, fluff. Yeah, yeah, that's what it reminded me of too. I don't know. I think about that when I watch it. I'm like, I always wonder what that is, because we all know that the ectoplasmic slime was was uh, rubber rubber glue. So, um, because that was always like, Can you imagine uh, 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 as he wipes it all over the books. Oh, I know. <laughs> Oh, God. I love it when they're always like, here, take a sample. And then they're just, you're supposed to be scientists. What? Well, and I, so they're supposed to be scientists, and yet, you know, Ray, Ray's idea of, of approaching the ghost is, get her! Get her. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that they mock him for that, you know? know that's hilarious. You're never, ever living that one down. <laughs> get her. That was your whole plan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. This is bringing winging it to a whole new level. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. It's just so funny. Just... How very entrepreneurial of them, though. Yes. 
Yeah, and it, it, yeah it's like I I love the the magazine shot covers that they show all the mine, which is sort of shows you that the popular stuff of the day and and there's there's so many fun things about this movie you know um when he goes to visit her to tell her uh, uh when she gets out of her cello rehearsals yes is a cello right yeah. um and uh he goes to tell her about the word he can't pronounce Hittites yes um and she's like, he's like, and uh, she's like, Hittites? <laughs> she's like, she knows it. She can read yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Did you do your homework before you showed up here? No, um, he's wearing the jumpsuit and a jacket. <laughs> I know. He's wearing that orange. I love the fact, and I love the fact, and that's exactly it, is, is when they pull away and there's that roller skater in the background spinning and he spins too. I love that. Just little yeah. details are just so fantastic in this movie. There's nothing that about this movie that I feel like I need to rush through or that I want to skip over or exactly. I mean, even, even Rick Moranis as he's running through the streets trying to get away from the Gozer dog. Um, and I he's like the fact that funny. nobody else can see it happening. No. And I love that, which is so I, funny. One of my favorite Rick Moranis moments is actually when he, um, he talks to the carriage horse. Yeah. <laughs> And the guy in the, who's actually driving the carriage is like, uh, yeah, I, I'm the driver here. you got to talk to me. And he comes back and he talks to the horse. He's like, all the slaves will be freed. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the, you know, it, this is one of those things, too, where, where uh, clearly, the, you know, uh, Gozer's dogs are, are not panthers or bears or dogs. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, I love the fact that like everybody keeps referring to them as something other than like the scariest monster demon dog they've ever seen. <laughs> exactly. Like cute doggy, cute little pooch. <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh dear. <laughs> oh, somebody needs their prescription checked. <laughs> I know. Oh, my God, and you hear, you hear his skin sliding down the glass. It's like, ah. Because <laughs> he gets attacked by the dog that nobody else can see on the other side of the restaurant. Oh, my God. It was just so funny. And they picked, like, the classiest joint to do that at, too. That's a restaurant that's, like, right on the, the lake in um, Central Park. And they have, like, big to-dos there and weddings and stuff like that. It's a really, really neat, you know, classy joint. And they yeah. And nobody even stops to see what appears to be a homeless man having some type of fit on the other side of the glass. Uh, uh, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is New York. Is New York. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, so hilarious. Oh, I'm gonna bust a gut. I am. Oh. Honest to God. I think on that note. <laughs> <laughs> we have a viewer. Hi. Woo. <laughs> Watch us howl unending. Oh, God. Yeah, I know. And this is, I love when we do these because it's, it's just like reminiscing, um, yeah. you know, and uh, there's, there, there's so much about this movie. Oh. I, I can't imagine um, anybody not liking this movie. Seriously. Like, I don't think I've ever come across somebody that goes, I don't like Ghostbusters. Like, no. And if I did, I would just have to, I don't know, never speak to them again. Well, honestly, I mean, there are some things you just, you can't not, like, I, I just, I don't know, how do you get past that? Like, how do you bridge that gap between liked Ghostbusters and didn't like Ghostbusters? Like, because I don't know anybody really that bad. just, yeah, I don't know anybody that just sort of, sort of likes, like, everybody loves Ghostbusters, everybody. Yeah. And when it's, I mean, when it's on, on AMC and they do uh, the, the, um, the fun facts and stuff like that, Twitter just lights up with, Everybody, you know, in their favorite lines, and, and everybody wants to chat about it, and they all want to talk about Bankman, and they want to talk about Egon and Ray and no. Egon. Um, <laughs> oh, I we have really to appreciate the animated series, though. Did you watch that as well? I, I did, I, as a kid. I, kid. Say, yeah, I can't imagine you not having seen that. But I okay. loved that. And Egon's hair got even more fabulous. For... Do the curl, the curl. <laughs> it's great. 
Yeah, it, it's just I can't wait to see what they're gonna do. I really want to see what's gonna happen. I, they they keep talking about Ghostbusters three, and I I really can't wait to see what's gonna happen with that. As long um, as there's Michael Bay attached. Yeah. Yeah. There's a there 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 there's so many ways it could go right, and so many ways it could go kind of like when they're talking about doing the remake of Goonies. Yeah. Or rebooting or Goonies. Goonies right. or, I know, it's just there's so many things that could go horribly wrong with that. I just, uh, I mean, <clears throat> don't get me wrong, I don't think I realized how many of the movies that I saw as a kid were actually remakes of stuff from the 40s and 50s. I don't I don't know that I actually ever, you know, I, I, I didn't have anybody to really discuss that with. No, right? <laughs> so I had no idea that, you know, some of the movies that, that I, I came to really know and love in the 80s were actually remakes of other things or in the 90s or whatever, you know, um... Yeah. I don't, I don't know, know that I was aware of how much remaking was actually going on during that period. Well, and I, I feel and like there's a lot more now. I feel like I'm a fan of the idea of the thing that I love having this longevity. You know, yeah. like the idea that generations from now people will still be enjoying The Princess Bride makes me right. happy because that's my favorite movie. You know, right. but right. I, while I am tentatively like. Hopeful because there are really skilled and very talented people out there who could be attached to this project. Mm -hmm. There's also Michael Bay, <laughs> 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 who wanted to make my beautiful, lovely, ridiculous Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles aliens. Yeah. Oh, honey. Like, why do you hate me? And yeah, and there's also there's also. Um... The writer that shall not be named. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, who is associated with a certain Superman project? Uh, yeah, I, well, exactly. I would hate. I would hate to see something like that happen. You know, you don't want your story to be written by somebody who clearly hates the entire genre and everyone who likes it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so, I, you know, I, I really, I really, really want to see. Yeah. Something, you know. Fun and at the same time nostalgic. Yes. Well, and I mean, you, and there are a lot of different directions you can go in when you do a remake. You know, like um, Total Recall, for example. That mm. I love, 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 love the Arnold Schwarzenegger Total Recall. I don't know why. It's just awesome and ridiculous. Because it, it's it's Arnold in his glory. You know. Yeah. It just made me happy. You know, when I, she, I felt I felt that way about Predator. I loved, right? Predator. You know, like there's one moment where you know he's meeting up with his girlfriend person from Mars, and they don't know what's going on, and she grabs him right by the junk, and she says, "What you been feeding this thing?" And he says, "Blondes." <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, like, this is stuff you can't do anymore, you know? <laughs> yeah. And she's like, "Oh, I'm still hungry." <laughs> about that. Oh my god, that's amazing. What, what is that? What what is the what is the the thing that they what is it lives? I, oh, I can't remember this. In that movie, the <laughs> It's something lives. They write it on the walls, right? Oh, Kowato. Yes. No. <laughs> Sorry, we no, went to and there was, there I, was, there I know, was I know, I know. I did, uh, <laughs> that's always what I, yeah. I, was just, I, I actually God, wrote lives. the Colin Farrell remake or reboot of Total Recall was, in a lot of ways, completely different movie. It had a different right. feel, it had a different tone, it had a different visual. It, I liked that. I like that it had a couple of things that threw back to the original, but it didn't try and just remake the same movie because it knew it couldn't. Right. So made something different. I don't think it has the staying power the original one did for because it wasn't as cheesy and wasn't as fun and whatever. But I actually enjoyed it as an action movie. And I and I feel and I feel like that that's a that's a good example of something that has done correctly, unlike um, the day the Earth stood still, which uh, I have to say, ever since I was a little kid, staying home with the flu or whatever, you know, watching that that movie, the original one from the 50s in black and white, I adore that movie. And there's a lesson to be learned, and it's done well, and it's uh, um, it's a really good movie. 
I think. It's one of my favorites. And then they came back with Keanu Reeves. Aww. <laughs> and I love I, I love Keanu, don't get me wrong. But this was this was not the place to, to remake this story in the way that they remade it. And it lost a lot of the lesson that gets learned. It, it lost some things that were just not... Just wasn't as impactful. Right. Because Klaatu, in the original, is a very wise man. And he understands that people, uh, races of all kinds, react from a base of fear. And that that's perhaps not who we really are. That is... Uh, one element of something that happens. Keanu, on the other hand, has like this temper tantrum because <laughs> he doesn't get what he wants right away and then just wants to obliterate us all. And that's yeah. not at all how that story worked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no. taking my toys and going home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... So yeah, so I, I'm very curious to see what they're gonna do with Ghostbusters, and I really, I really hope that it's not. Um, I, I hope that they bring in enough nostalgia from the originals to sort of, you know, pull the rest of us along, and yet it's gonna be fresh and new enough for other people who have perhaps unthinkably not seen that movie yet, either of them. And I can't blame people for not watching Ghostbusters too. Ghostbusters, though, you have, I, I really think that's. Yeah. Something you have to watch. I mean, I know people that that they love Ghostbusters too, just as much as the first one. I I, I I'll watch it, but it's yeah. not it's not nearly um I don't know. It just doesn't have the same place in my heart as Ghostbusters does. And it probably sounds cheesy, but you know, I just I adore that movie. I agree. <laughs> oh, it was such a good movie. It is. I want to go watch it now. I do. I want to go watch it now. Go watch it now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's been our uh, very nostalgic, somewhat disjointed conversation about Ghostbusters. Come hit us up on Twitter uh, and visit bringoutyourgeek.com. Say hi. Try it. You'll like it. <laughs> we're always looking. Yeah, we're always looking for stuff to discuss too. So you know, uh, there's, there's you. Hit us on Twitter, or you can actually uh, do it on G Plus as well. Ooh, yes, exactly. Suggestions. We're open to suggestions. Mm -hmm. And on that note, goodbye. goodbye.